peace be unto you. Welcome to the Dean Show. I'm Eddie, your host. Let me ask you a question. If I ask now 1.5 over, you know what, 1.7 billion Muslims all over the globe, if I ask them, do you love Jesus? None of them would hesitate and say, yes, we do. Let me ask you, the not yet Muslims, do you love Muhammad? Many of you, you're going to be startled and say, Muhammad, who is he? Many of them, many of you don't know about one of the most influential Michael H. Hart, who talks about in his book the 100 most influential men throughout history, he labeled Muhammad, peace be upon him, number one, who was the last and final messenger sent to mankind. So it's a shame that you don't know this man, but in this short episode, we're going to be talking about his life, his biography, with the author of Jesus and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When we come back here on The Dean Show, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as rahmatullah. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a real pleasure and honor to be here today. Thank you for being with us. I kind of got uh, stuck there. I was on some old numbers. I said 1.5 billion. No, no, it's actually over 1.7 billion Muslims. You're one of those Muslims, just like Jesus was, one who submits to the will of the Creator, not the creation. And if I asked you, do you love Jesus, what would you say? Absolutely. Unequivocally, yes, I do. Absolutely. No hesitation there. No hesitation. But many people, you heard now the other side of the question, we asked uh, not yet Muslims, do you love Muhammad? And a lot of people, they don't know Muhammad, so we're doing this episode so people can get to know Muhammad. That's why you wrote the book. So you put Jesus and the last and final messenger. Tell us why this title. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Uh, I really admire the work that uh, you and, and the Dean Show have been doing. I think sure. uh, calling people to the truth is a fantastic uh, calling. And the reason why I did the book is for the sake of God. You know, there's no other uh, higher purpose than serving God and, and essentially remembering the memories and the examples, good examples of the prophets, including Jesus, uh, may peace be upon him, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I realize that there's a huge opportunity here when you think about uh, books like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. These are very, very popular uh, fiction stories, but uh, there's an even more inspiring, true nonfiction story um, that is very well historically documented, and it is the life of uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Peace be upon him, and the Prophet that was before him was a Jesus, may peace be upon him. And uh, that is a story that a lot of folks are familiar with. They're familiar with different versions. And uh, not only did Jesus, but Moses, they knew that there would be a last and final messenger. And it's in the scriptures. It's in the Torah, and it's also in the Bible. And uh, essentially, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, has been a big inspiration in my life. And I wanted friends, family, and neighbors to benefit and be inspired and have a fun time reading this fast-paced, inspirational, nonfiction story, Jesus and the Last Messenger. Is it true what I said now? You have Michael H. Hart, who was, uh, was he a historian. He went back and he looked at all the different top figures throughout history, and he put, he mentioned, you know, Jesus in there. He mentions many, many other uh, great people, but he put Muhammad, peace be upon him, number one. Is this true? He did indeed. Uh, Michael Hart did list uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, may peace be upon him, as the number one most influential uh, figure in all of history. You know, looking at uh, folks of all different faiths, political leaders, religious leaders, and I think it's very remarkable. It's very remarkable that, that he did that. I agree with the statement. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the last, mess the last and final messenger and prophet, um, he was. He played so many roles. He was um, a spiritual leader. He was the head of a, a, a nation state. Uh, he was the commander in chief. He was at the front lines when he had to go uh, into conflict, into battle as a last resort when a peaceful means didn't work. Uh, he was a marriage counselor. He was a husband. He was a father. 
And I don't know of very many uh, figures, historical figures, that uh, did so many things so well. They used to say that he used to spend a third uh, of his life uh, for family purposes, a third of his life for prayer, and a third of his life attending to uh, matters of the state. And so it's just phenomenal to see his commitment and the grand, amazing, inspirational impact that he's had. But I think there's an opportunity that we have in the West and other places in the world for folks to be introduced and for folks that know about the story, for the story to be uh, reinvigorated and reignited. And uh, I actually reread uh, many parts of the story of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and the Quran, just so that we can remind ourselves of all the miracles uh, that occurred in his life. And we should believe uh, in God, the one and only God, uh, and his prophets, all the prophets, including Jesus and Moses and Abraham and the Prophet Muhammad, who was the last and final messenger, um, and the angels and the scriptures. And if we believe in all those things, uh, really, truly remarkable things can happen. It can really solve all of society's problems if we believe yeah. in that. Uh, tell us, Adam, we know that uh, it's not hard to get to know Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His life is so authentically recorded. He's one of the most documented men in history. I mean, the... If you look, that's one of the miracles along with, we have the Quran, the verbatim word of God, which is living miracle. But now were you just fascinated writing about his life, his biography? Did you see miracles inside just his day-to-day -day activities and life? And were you inspired now even more? Does it, does it increase you in your iman, we say, in your faith? It, it has indeed increased me in my faith. Uh, it has uh, brought me back to the faith. I've, I was born Muslim. Uh, but, uh, you know, you go through different levels of spirituality, and in the last few uh, years since I started this effort, it has reinvigorated my faith. And uh, there were a lot of miracles, and the one that you mentioned is perhaps the greatest miracle that he had, uh, the scripture, the purified scripture that has been unaltered for the last 14 centuries, uh, which is the Quran, the book of truth, the book of God, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, um, but there were uh, many other miracles. Uh, during one of the battles, uh, it is uh, the Battle of the Trench. Uh, the, his followers, the Muslims, were essentially digging a big trench and uh, they were going to face off with the Quraysh who persecuted and opposed the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Muslims. And uh, during one of the, the scenes, uh, there was a believer, a Muslim, that invited him because it was a time of drought and hunger. And, and the hunger was so bad that the Muslims and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to tie stones around their stomach to repress the hunger. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had to tie two stones to his uh, belly because the, the hunger was so bad. And so this Muslim uh, believer, follower, uh, called him and said, hey, why don't you bring a few of your friends over uh, and we can eat a meal together. My wife has uh, prepared something. We've slaughtered an animal uh, and we have some bread. And so uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, come on. And he basically motioned to much of the army to come with him. And when they uh, went there, uh, this Muslim follower was, was uh, oh my gosh, I don't know. He's talking to his wife uh, whether we're going to have enough uh, food uh, to feed all these people. And the wife had complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, you know what, he knows what he's doing. And one of the miracles of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when food was scarce, when water was scarce, uh, through supplicating and saying prayers to the one and only God, the one and only Creator, Allah, uh, the, the, the food was able to multiply and the water was able to gush forth. And this is very well documented by hundreds and hundreds of witnesses. All those are witnesses yes. there who ate from that yes. food, drank from the, yes. from the milk or the water exactly. that was multiplied, does exactly. that right? Exactly, exactly. You know, I, th I think one of the things, uh, not only in the Muslim circles, but Christian circles, Jewish circles, all the different faiths, is that we believe uh, in historical events, be it uh, the Roman Empire, be it the time of Jesus, Abraham, and this also is history. This is history. Uh, it is one of the opportunities that we have in the West to have a balanced approach, and this is something that a lot of us need to take a look at. But this book, um, while it is based on historical events, uh, it es essentially tries to focus on the inspirational, nonfiction uh, parts of the life, the conversations, the miracles, uh, the events. And so when people read it, it doesn't read like a history book. It reads like you were actually there, and it's fun. People are able to read it in one sitting in a matter of three or four hours. Jesus and the Last Messenger we're going to be back with more, God willing, here to talk more about this book with the author. We'll be right back here on The Dean Show. I want you to imagine you wake up and in front of you are a bunch of guys running around 
kicking a ball. No goals, no lines, no rules. What would you think? But is that your life? Surely every sport has its goal. Every game has its end. It has its objective. It has its rules. How about life? How about our life? Isn't there a goal to life? Isn't there a purpose, an objective that we have to reach? We think so. The Quran tells us that we exist in order to worship God and worshiping God means knowing God. As the Quran says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Worship though is not some narrow, small thing. It's wide, it's vast, it encompasses everything that the human being does. Everything that you do, everything that you think, everything that you feel can be done, thought, said, felt in a way that is either pleasing or displeasing to God. The purpose of life is to try and do everything in a way that God loves and God is pleased with. That is your goal. Back here on the Dean Show, now those 1.7 plus billion Muslims, those who submit to the Creator, not the creation, we love Jesus. People are now through this episode trying to get some glimpses of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Jesus came with the same message that Muhammad came. Muhammad came with the same message Jesus came. They all call people to worship the one God, the one creator, not the creation. Do good, prepare for the day of judgment. Now people, a lot of people, the reason we bring up these miracles, many people, they flaunt. Jesus did so many wonderful miracles, you know what I mean? And he was a man of peace, you follow me? So twofold question. Uh, we talked about one of the miracles. We have the ultimate miracle, the Qur'an. It's the verbatim word of God. It's testable to this day. But also through examples in a prophet's life, we see these miracles. So is there, are there any other miracles that you can share with us? And also the other question would be like, how is he a prophet if you're talking about these wars that he went through? Because many people, they know Jesus is never fighting, you know. But now Muhammad, they try to discredit him because he was in some battles. Yes, well, you know, it, it's very interesting that uh, in the early part of his prophethood and when uh, the Muslim community what was forming, that uh, God, the, the one and only creator, Allah, uh, did not give permission for the Muslims to fight. So he basically was preaching peacefully. He was leading a good life, had good character, showed good example. He was very truthful. He was absolutely inspiring. But he did everything through peaceful means. And it wasn't uh, until multiple, multiple years that uh, the tribe of Quraysh uh, persecuted and prevented uh, the, the Muslims from, for example, visiting uh, the sanctuary, uh, the Kaaba, the house that uh, Abraham built uh, many, many centuries ago, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran uh, revealed verses that gave uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Muslims the uh, permission to go ahead and fight because they have been prevented from going to the sanctuary, the house of God, and from practicing their religion uh, openly. So uh, there's a misperception that Islam was spread through the sword. It was uh, spread through good character, by good examples, and when they were confronted, then they were given permission to go ahead and fight. And there's, there's rules of engagement and fighting in war. Um, thank God I, I have myself never been in a war, but um, there's a way to do everything. There's a way to do everything. And, and that was one of the things that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was taught. On your first part of your question around miracles, there are so many miracles. Hold it, hold it right yeah, there. We're going to get to absolutely. the miracles. But isn't it ironic when you watch uh, you know, some of these uh, figures like um, you know, Alexander the Great, they call him, or when you see Braveheart and you know, these people that are out there fighting for good and they got the sword and people are like, wow, this guy's amazing, he's a hero. But if you look at, like you were just mentioning, the earlier Muslims were tortured. Just like the Christians during Jesus' time, they were tortured, they were persecuted, you know, they were boycotted. Can you talk about this? You know, and they weren't fighting for how many years they went through the persecution, they didn't fight. You know what I mean? But finally, when they were able to defend themselves, they were able to, you know, fight for justice and for, for, the, for the, um, uh, being able to, to worship the Creator, not the creation, you know, why would anybody uh, object to that now and try to discredit Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Well, you know, I, I think sometimes when you, when you think about something that is so spectacular and so grand and too good to be true, um, you know, if, if you have not accepted uh, the faith of peace, um, you know, you want to sort of stick to what you know and what you've been taught. And it takes a great deal of courage and being brave to go out there and explore something. For example, um, I, I'm Muslim, 
And when I'm confronted with a new idea, it's worth checking out to see, does it hold up or not? And the proof uh, is there for folks that want to find out the truth. Um, so there are many reasons why, why folks try to discre discredit the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but you really have to carefully assess the argument and see what the motivations and intentions are. Uh, it's, it's amazing that you know, both of my neighbors in California are Christian, and uh, we have a very healthy respect with each other. They have differences of, of opinion about the prophets of times past. But um, we have a spectacularly even greater dialogue on interfaith matters. They've actually read the book. Um, and you know, we, we, we have healthy dialogue, but you really have to just understand whether people are trying to seek the truth or they have some other type of intention. Yeah. Now, when you look at how many people totally and totally died, even through these 23 years, I had one of my guests before, uh, Islamic scholar, he was talking about, about only 1,200 people in the whole 23 years. Do you know what number is that? I, I don't recall the, the figure exactly, but that's I know... Pretty, that's very low. Yes, and, and, compared and, and, to the casualties that the opposition, the Quraysh and their confederates and allies, they faced very, very heavy losses. In fact, after the Battle of Badr, the first major conflict that happened between the two sides, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and the Muslims versus the Quraysh and their allies, um, most of the leaders of the Quraysh um, died or passed away from, from their battle injuries. Yeah. And uh, the uh, Abu Sufyan, uh, the, the leader that uh, be became the leader of the Quraysh, he, he then stepped up, but he was very unprepared for that. But it is a very interesting yeah. point that you're making, Eddie, that, uh, uh, that the, the casualties were a lot heavier uh, uh, on the opposition that, that were trying to oppose the Prophet Muhammad and the Muslims. I, I, I'm talking about in totality, I think yes. it was only tw from both yes. sides, yes. I believe. Uh, and it's interesting if you read the Bible, for instance, when the... Uh, children of Israel, when they went and worshipped the calf, yes, yes. 3,000 people were put to death. This is according to the Bible in one day. And Moses is still not discredited. He's still considered a messenger of God. Right. That's just interesting. Right. Right. Interesting. Let, let, let's go. Do you have a comment? Yeah, on yeah. That? I was just going to say that, um, you know, finally when, um, not to give away the ending ending, but, but close to the end, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for a uh, vast majority of the angles that you look at this, uh, him and the followers, the Muslims, they actually overtake, they overtook the, the holiest city, Mecca, uh, through relatively peaceful means, with, with very little bloodshed. And so I think that, that is a, a big, big miracle. And uh, the fact that um, a lot of the people that opposed him, that uh, persecuted him and the Muslims, he was incredibly merciful. Absolutely. The example that you're giving, he had certain rights to sort of uh, exact justice, but he let go of the vast majority of folks. He did not hold them hostage. He did not take them prisoner. Um, there were some exceptions for good reason, but the vast majority of people were allowed to live peacefully. They were not forced into accepting Islam. Uh, I mean, that event in and of itself is just awe-inspiring. How peacefully they overtook uh, Mecca and how everybody was able to to coexist, whether that, they accepted the message yes. or not. That's when they came back 10,000 strong, right? Exactly. And now exactly. you can imagine what somebody, you know, uh, would come and do in retaliation uh, for all the abuse, exactly. for the torture, for the exactly. boycott. But there was... There no, are very few... Peacefully, uh, yes. you know, uh, came in and overtook yes. Mecca. Very few human beings that have shown that type of mercy. The amount of mercy, obviously Allah is the most merciful. He is the uh, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. But in terms of human beings, there are very few people that were as merciful and generous and kind and forgiving as the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him. You talk about that in your book. Absolutely. There's, okay, it's, so these things that we're examples. talking about, a yes. lot of this is in the book. Absolutely. It's, okay. a, it's available uh, you know, on Amazon, both we on paperback we, and ebook. Okay, so. we're going to talk some more. Yes, we're not of, done of course, quite yet. We're going to take a break. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite topics. We're talking about the biography of the last and final messenger sent to mankind. We're not excluding Jesus or Moses or Abraham. They were all Muslims live in Islam, and we're talking about their message and much more here on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on The Dean Show, and we're talking to the author of Jesus and the last and final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim 
if you exclude Jesus, you can have a one-way ticket to the hellfire as a Muslim. Is this true? Allah is uh, the master of the day of judgment, but we do need to accept all his prophets. All Otherwise, prophets. you know, we're going to uh, lower our chances of getting the ultimate reward of paradise. Exclude one, exclude them all. We accept them all. Exactly. We accept Moses, Jesus, yes. Abraham, the last and final yes. messenger, because they all came with the same message. Yes. They called people to have a loving relationship with the one who created you, the one you're going to return back to. And hopefully at the end of the show, when we ask people, you know, do you love Muhammad? They'll say, you know what? I'm so intrigued by what you guys are saying. I'm going to at least get to know him. And then hopefully they'll fall in love with him as over close to 1.7 1, 1. plus billion all over the world have. Now, miracles. People love these miracles. We have the living miracle of the Quran. We've talked about that at other shows. But let's talk about another miracle there at the battle. The trench preparing to defend themselves. The Quraysh, they're coming on the attack. And now, you know, the spirits are kind of low. They're digging the trench. They're working. There's a huge boulder. The Prophet saw some strikes it three times. Talk about this. Yes, it is uh, also a documented fact. It's uh, based on uh, accounts that have been well preserved over time. There's a very precise chain of narration that has happened over the last 14 centuries, and these are called Sahih Hadiths. These are examples and uh, well authenticated stories about the Prophet Muhammad. So they were trying to dig this trench, and you know, some of the soil was fairly tough to break away. And uh, one of the miracles that the Prophet Muhammad had was that he was able to tap or strike or pour water over these very difficult uh, rocks uh, to, to remove. And uh, on one such occasion, there was a very uh, big rock boulder, and uh, he struck it. And uh, from there appeared several lightning bolts. And uh, the Muslims asked, uh, Ya Rasulullah, uh, what is this? What is the meaning of this? And he said that, uh, that uh, the Muslims have been granted several lands that they would uh, overtake in the future, including Syria, uh, including uh, modern day, or back then Persia, now it's called Iran, and several other lands, Byzantium. Uh, and so there were really four lands that were mentioned there. And uh, it came to pass uh, shortly after he passed away that the Muslims overtook all those lands. If you take a look at 14 uh, centuries ago, thereabouts, uh, the Muslims in very short order conquered all those lands. And again, this is a historically documented prophecy and miracle. The event that happened in the lightning bolts, uh, his interpretation, and that played itself out. On the example of Persia, for example, uh, and other uh, lands such as uh, Byzantium and Abyssinia, which is called modern-day Ethiopia, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had the courage to write letters to these very powerful leaders. Uh, some of them knew about him, others didn't. And um, you know, the, the leader of Persia, uh, when he got the letter, he ripped it up into bits. He was so angry, he considered himself Astaghfirullah, to be God. And we know that, that that's not the case. And he actually sent some people to Yemen, which was under his control, to say, arrest this man, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, And when those people actually arrived uh, at the Prophet Muhammad uh, place, uh, he saw them, and he saw that they had you know, very big mustaches, and they had shaved their beard. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was exactly, he had a, he had a beard, and he shaved his, his mustache. And they exchanged sort of comments about you know, what the situation is. And um, he said, why don't you come back some, you know, to the next day? And so he came back the next day, the, the people from Yemen. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had actually received information from Angel Jibreel. Uh, angel Jibreel is the same angel that came to all the prophets, uh, to Moses, to Abraham, to Jesus, and to the last and final messenger. And he gave him news that uh, the emperor of Persia had been slain, had been murdered at the hands of his very own son, the son of the emperor of Persia. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, conveyed this to the two people from Yemen and said, why don't you take this back uh, and, and let them know about it? And, and here's some, here some gold you know, to take back is a good gesture. And uh, these two people went back, the soldiers went back, and told the, uh, the ruler of Yemen about what the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said. And they were just flabbergasted. How could somebody make that statement? And they said, well, let's just wait. And actually, shortly thereafter, a messenger came from Persia and uh, brought news that, in fact, the emperor of Persia had been slain and that the son of that late emperor was asking for their allegiance. And then they realized that how could somebody sitting hundreds of miles away know about this event happening? Uh, and so then the, um, the ruler of Yemen uh, and all of his dignitaries, uh, the people that reported in to him, uh, accepted Islam and sent message back 
And the Prophet uh, sent forth Muslims to help them understand more about Islam. And many of the people in Yemen were in fact Christian, and they followed suit and also accepted Islam. So that in and of itself, and there's many, many stories I would encourage uh, folks that are Muslim, that are Christian, that are Jew, to take a look at the story, to have fun and to learn the truth about this historical historical account. It's a very fast-paced book, and uh, they can learn about all these stories. There's a lot that's packed in there, but it's done in a way that it doesn't feel dense. Yeah, Uh, there was no uh, instant uh, messenger. Uh, no email. No, this has happened. There's no cell phone. That's right. <laughs> and this is a journey that'll take you know yes. probably about close to two months. Exactly. So he's getting this information. Exactly. You know, this is a miracle in itself. One, one more, one more. Yes, uh, just give please. it a condensed version. Bounty com- hunters coming after him. Yes. This guy's an experienced horse rider. He's sinking in the sand. Yes. Talk to us about this. Absolutely. So the context around this is that uh, the Quraysh. Um, had sort of had it at a, at a certain point. And they said to themselves, like, we need to deal with this Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam character. And so they uh, conspired to essentially uh, get younger men to all hold, uh, it's unthinkable, but hold uh, weapons and essentially uh, take the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he wasn't at that meeting. But the angel Jibreel uh, basically relayed Uh, This information of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, although he wasn't anywhere close to the meeting. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only creator God, uh, gave the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, permission. Because he didn't act without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving him direction on how to move forward. And so he was given permission to leave Mecca, to immigrate to Medina. And so he did. And on the, on the immigration there with, his, uh, with the Sahaba named Abu Bakr, his companion and close friend, uh, they were going and they were on the journey. And uh, there was a very brave warrior that chased them because there was a ransom on their heads. There was a lot of camels that were going to be uh, guaranteed for the person that captured the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and brought them back to the Quraysh. And so he wanted that ransom. And uh, basically on the way uh, going there, he sank in the sand once, got up, kept going, sank in the sand twice, chasing the Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr, his friend, uh, and then sank in the sand three times, and they realized, you know what, there's something strange going on here, I'm not going to be able to catch up to them, and said, you know what, I give up, and called out to them, and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, Abu Bakr, came uh, to this warrior and said, uh, yes, what, what's going on? And he said, can you please write something so that you will recognize me should I meet you in the future? And Abu Bakr wrote something and, and gave it over, and, uh, and then as the warrior was leaving, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Like, what would you say if you were to see uh, the jewelry uh, of uh, the Emperor of Persia?" And the warrior was flabbergasted. Like, who's going to even come close to that stuff? And he just walked away. And it came to pass that that warrior uh, witnessed that event. Happen. He was able to actually wear those uh, bracelets. I think of the the, the leader was it of uh, Persia? Of, of Persia. This was a prophecy that came true. Yes, exactly. That made so many miracles. You talk about this in the book. Absolutely. It's All in of the these book. things that we, we we talked about. It's in the book. It's in the book. Absolutely. Okay, we're out of time. Tell us now uh, where can people get the book? People can get the book on Amazon. It's available on paperback and ebook. All the proceeds go to charity. To to Awake Eye Revival. It's a nonprofit uh, organization, and uh, it has uh, 12 five out of five stars uh, on Amazon. And uh, all yeah. proceeds go to all proceeds go to charity for yes. charitable pur- purposes to spread the truth uh, of the message. And this book has also been reviewed by uh, Sheikh uh, Omar Salaman, and and sections of it have been reviewed by Sheikh Yasser Qadi, two very well respected uh, scholars. On They've this reviewed topic. the book also. Yes, they have. Okay, just in, in the last uh, 15 seconds, what was the message of the Prophet Muhammad? It was, uh, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God except Allah, and Muhammad, may peace be upon him, is the messenger. And it was a message of peace. That's it. Thank you very much for Thank being you. with Jazakallah us. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Thank you. We'll see you uh, soon, hopefully. Thank you so much for being with us on the Deen Show. Thank you very much. So that was his message. La ilaha illallah, there's no deity, nothing worthy of worship except the one who made you, your creator, my creator, the creator of this universe and everything in it. That's the same message that Jesus came with. La ilaha illallah, there's no at his time, God worthy of worship except Allah, except the creator. And Jesus at that time was the messenger. At Moses' time, la ilaha illallah, there's no God worthy of worship except the creator. And at that time, Moses' time, you had to follow the messenger who was Moses. And at this time, your time, today, The last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So get to know this man. It'd be a shame. We love Jesus. And you would love Muhammad, but you didn't know him. Now you know a little bit about him. And it'd be a shame if you don't continue to get to know him. And it's a guarantee. Let me tell you something. If you're sincere, 
open mind, open minded, humble hearted, and you get to know this man, you will fall in love with him because he came with the truth. He came with a message, a believable message, and the proof. They'll get you to Jannah. They'll get you to paradise. So get to know this man. Follow his sunnah, his way. And this is a guarantee. If you live this life according to God's will, not your desires, and you follow the last and final messenger sent to mankind, you will have Jannah. You will have paradise, and you'll avoid the hellfire. One awful place to be at, but a wonderful place to be in is Jannah. Let's strive for it. Follow us on the Facebook and the Twitter, and contribute to the Dean Show so we can help educate the world, so we can help get this message out, this message of peace, peace acquired by submission to the will of the Creator, not the creation. We'll see you next time. Inshallah, God willing. Until then, peace be unto